So today we're going to present the 3D technology challenge, um, 3D printing. I'm the manufacturer and engineering manager at Animatic, so I'm responsible for uh, the facility and all the equipment and um, all the uh, technicians and maintenance team at Animatic. And I'm Steve Noth, I'm the plant manager at the New York facility here in Santamarac. responsible for all manufacturing here in the New York. Uh, we have approximately about 550 employees at our New York plant, believe it or not, so it's a fairly good sized facility. We're going to go through a presentation, talk a little bit about the company, and then uh, get into some good detail on what this project's all about and what your expectations are. So I'm going to see you back in February for the actual competition. All right, so a little bit about Animatic. Um, we're a complete packaging solution company, so we provide uh, innovative solutions for our customers. We make metal shells that go on with the products, um, in all kinds of different shapes and colors. Um, in the work facility, we take uh, aluminum foil, stamp that out to the, to the shape, the part, a little bit of grease it to get the oil off, and after that, Sometimes brush the parts or pop them, and then they'll be anodized. So we can do almost every color under the sun, up in white. And then some of our parts get assembled after that, so we'll take the parts and shoot glue in them and push the plastic in. Um, so there's a good mix of a lot of the parts that we make up there. So what we're actually producing is the top. Yes. So we, don't, we don't do the rest of the package. Wanted. Got the body works, Victoria's Secret, we've got a list of all of our customers out there, so it's a variety of customers. So, this is a kind of a global map that shows our facilities. We have a stamping facility in Naugatuck, Connecticut. They just make the uh, raw aluminum parts there and ship them to the north to be to Greece. They have a facility now, our headquarters in New Albany. They do anodizing, assembly, and decorating there. Uh, we have a sales office in Paris, France, and then we have a complete facility in China as well. In China, they do all the stamping, the greasing, and the anodizing assembly there as well. Here's a list of our customers, um, some of them at least. Um, you know, as Steve mentioned, uh, we do a lot for Bath and Body Works, Victoria's Secret. Uh, Estee Lauder's a big uh, customer of ours as well. Mary Kay, Dior. Um, so, about design engineering. Design engineering covers multiple engineering disciplines, including electrical, mechanical, chemical, aeronautical, civil, and structural engineering. Design engineers may work with a team of engineers and other designers to develop a conceptual and detailed design. Design engineers will typically create prototypes. Prototypes are either functional or non functional. So, by functional, an example of one of our products would be a cap where you can actually open the lid and uh, screw it on the bottle. Non-functional would be uh, just a solid object, so it wouldn't have uh, the hinge functionality and it wouldn't be able to go on the bottle and just something that you can quickly make and someone can hold and look at and say, yeah, it's about the right size, the right shape, I'm looking for it. To finalize the prototype, a lot of times we have to go through a lot of different iterations get the exact size and shape our customers are looking for. Once the prototype is finalized, the next step is to manufacture the pre-production components. Um, the most common metric we use to define whether our product is ready for production or not is called the uh, CPK, it's a compatibility index. And this measures the variation in our process, so how consistent we're able to produce a part. Uh, this shows some various different stages of the design engineering. So on the far left, those are just sketches made on a tablet of um, bottles with various uh, shape caps on them. And then in the middle, uh, and I guess it's the middle, is where they're done a little more detail-wise on the uh, tablet. And on the right are examples of prototypes we've made. Um, so the aluminum parts we make on a little CNC mill and we actually have our own 3D printers so the blue color there are parts that we've 3D printed and uh, 
the most part, they're always functional. They have the threads on them, the hinge, and you, know, you can flip the cap to them if they have to flip. Um, we're able to produce those in about a day or two, and then we can even anodize them. So it's really helped us to be able to give something to our customer really quickly and say, this is about what it will look like. You know, is this what you have on? So it's something that's really useful for us because before you had the rapid prototype, it would take weeks and weeks and weeks to be able to produce a single part. By that point, you have a lot of time and money invested into that part. These are some drawings that are made along the, the path of design. Um, this is an assembly print, so it shows all the components. It shows the lid that we can make on top of the bottle. It shows the plastic insert inside the metal shell. And it gives all the uh, dimensional criteria that we have to meet for our customers package to work. So some considerations that we have to, to keep when we're making a product for our customer. Um, the plastic metal fit, if there's a high interference fit, it may cause a distortion of the metal shell. You can see um, what we call crazy in the metal shell. It's a disruption of the anodized surface. It kind of looks like small stress cracks. So in order to keep away from that problem, we uh, usually will provide a clearance fit. So what that is is a slightly loose fit. So we'll make the diameter of the plastic slightly less than the inside diameter of the metal. So about five thousandths would be a good clearance fit. Um, and then we also have to consider the tolerance range for the metal versus the plastic. So you know, if one part's of the min and one part's of the max, how much of an overlap of those dimensions can be? Uh, typically we'll use adhesive to glue the parts together. Sometimes we're able to make parts with locking features like teeth or snap rings. We don't have to use them. Uh, another design function we use we call a no more edge, where we roll the bottom edge of the metal over so that there's no sharp edge there to uh, scratch or cover, for example. Um, some design engineering hints for this challenge. Um, sometimes it may be helpful to review similar products before you start your design to give you some ideas. So for this 3D challenge, we're going to make a, uh, a container with a body and a lid. So you know, my suggestion would be is to uh, look at stuff you have at home, like spice jars, um, pill boxes, which is what's in the left there, um, things like that. And then you, know, you can work that into your design. It be a good starting point. So interference and snap fits for you to hold parts together by means of uh, other than fasteners and adhesives. So, you know, pill boxes will often have a uh, snap feature where uh, jars will have the threads. Um, so that'll be a helpful thing for you as part of the challenge. And, you know, I wouldn't expect your first try to work and work this right, so plan on having some trial and error. A little bit about 3D printing. 3D printing is the use of uh, various processes to make a three-dimensional object. The technology involved laying successive layers one at a time. So our 3D printer, and the same as here, uh, will build up a thin layer on a thin layer vertically, and over time you get the whole object. It's it's somewhat slow, but like I said, compared to the way we used to do things, it's extremely fast. Um, 3D printing technologies are found in applications starting in the 1980s. Product development, data visualization, rapid prototyping, and specialized manufacturing. So in specialized manufacturing, sometimes there's parts you can't manufacture with current technology, so they would be forced to 3D print if it's a critical shape, for example. Um, the speed that these printers operate that allow objects to be manufactured in relatively short time periods compared to the traditional these printers also allow you to manufacture items that you cannot be able to replicate the same process, which a square hole would be a good example. It's pretty difficult to actually make a hole that's exactly square. Um, 3D printer calibration, this is something that we do, and that's an example of a calibration cube I actually made. Um, the reason you want to print a cube that's one inch by one inch 
help to make sure you know measure it um, is to make sure your printer is actually printing to scale. So if you made a one inch cube and it actually prints out you know, three quarters inch, you know that your scale's off and you're going to have to scale your 3D model to come up to the right size. Tinkercad. Um, and Tinkercad, um, but Tinkercad is also part of the 1-2-3D um, Autodesk. So you can use Tinkercad to get some skills and then build into their other set of programming. So if any of you are high schoolers and looking to get those skills and then move them into the other realm, you are welcome to do that. You just can't make your final product from Tinkercad. <coughs> some, of the other, some of the other materials you're going to need is the SLS file to print. Uh, must be in the format a 3D printer, which you can use in one of the works or Royer or other printers in the area. Um, ours are the easiest for you to get access to if there are not, if you don't have one at your school already. Um, if you have them at your school already, you are welcome to use those. Um, they, but as far as readily available within the county, us, or occasionally if they're closer to you guys and we're having tons of issues, we'll get them set with you guys, or C-Tech has too. So we have sent folks to C-Tech as well. Size, shape, etc., and the career opportunities to utilize 3D printing. 
right? So the teams that did well were the ones that really concentrated on those four points and made sure that they had good examples of each and gave a, a, a decent presentation. Because at the end, there are several teams that are very close. And so what wins out, you don't have to have a great presentation. What you need is to have a great product. So don't put a lot of time in the presentation to make it look great if you don't have a good product. So we're, we're judging the product and not the presentation. Well, this is kind of a small and hard read. You would pass out the uh, the rubric in that criteria pack. Yep, rubric, yep, rubric is in the packet. And this is just uh, the same thing. Spell back out again. So it gives you how many point breakdowns each of the criteria are. The, Um, we can also print STL here. STL? Mm -hmm. No, it, it's not the character that it's there's a bunch of software. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, for contact information, uh, I used to be a design engineer at Animatic, so if you have questions, that might be a good resource for that kind of thing. C is also available. I'm not the design engineer, so he's probably a more technical <laughs> guy, but I can get all of them if you have information or answer some of the stuff about the content. Yeah. Any questions?